The state is an organ of class rule, an organ for the oppression of one class by another. It is the creation of order. So in this state that we live in, you know, if you're in the United States, um, the state that has, the class that has the state is the bourgeoisie, creating order for the proletariat. And they do that order through laws, which legalizes and perpetuates this oppression by moderating the conflict between classes. As protests have erupted in Minneapolis and throughout the country surrounding the murder of George Floyd at the hands of police, it has reopened the national discourse of good cops versus bad cops. Some are arguing that bad seeds shouldn't be a representation of the whole forest, while others are calling for the abolition of police under the slogan ACAB, ACAB, or all cops are bastards. While I agree with the sentiments and the rage that is in there in the latter point, I want to try to dispel the myth of, well, are cops good or bad? Do we need them? Um, by not moralizing the institution, but rather looking at its function. So we understand okay, right, the, what the purpose of an army is. It is to defend the nation state, its borders, whatever have you. It defends the international interests of the nation state that is determined by the state's ruling class. In the imperialist country, the army serves to occupy new lands, thus invading new markets, as imperialism is the highest stage of capitalism. And make no mistake, in the United States, we live in an imperialist country. That's why we invaded Iraq in 2002. But if you just want to look at U.S. foreign policy in Asia, Africa, Latin America, Eastern Europe, and the Middle East of the, at least the past 100 years, verifies this. So police are parallel to the army, but at home. They are the foot soldiers for the state, just much more localized. Under capitalism, we live in a dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. What that just means is that the class with the capital, the class with money, controls the state and they can, uh, thus control the means of production. Lenin goes into this much more than I will in his State and Revolution, which can I just say, if you can possibly get your hands on reading that, listening to an audiobook, please, if you can, go into that, get familiar with that text. It is a very important text, one just to have, but also in this time. Um, but he talks about how the state exists to mediate between the classes that have always been, are, and always will be opposed to one another, proletariat and the bourgeoisie. And so some of you might be like, well, what the hell is that? What are, what are, uh, <laughs> the proletariat is the working class, the class who sells their labor for a wage for survival. The bourgeoisie is the class that owns the wealth and owns the means of production like the owner of a factory, the owner of a business, your landlord. So Lenin, he states that the state is a product and a manifestation of the irreconcilability of class antagonisms. The state arises where, when, and insofar as class antagonisms objectively cannot be reconciled. He makes it a point that the state doesn't actually fix these problems, but, um, and I'm gonna quote him now, paraphrasing Marx, the state is an organ of class rule, an organ for the oppression of one class by another. It is the creation of order. So in this state that we live in, you know, if you're in the United States, um, the state that has, the class that has the state is the bourgeoisie creating order for the proletariat, and they do that order through laws, which legalizes and perpetuates this oppression by moderating the conflict between classes. So all that is to say is that the state arises out of the existence of class society, and class society is the division of people based on their relation to production. The state creates its laws and its armed body to control and subdue the majority who they exploit, who they continuously exploit. So, police are not here to protect us because they're here to uphold the laws, the laws that were created by the rich. So, cap so the police under capitalism just enforce the interests of the rich. 
and they protect the rich. So several states and the, and the government, the federal government, are setting forth tightening measures to restrict what little real existing liberties we have, uh, threatening to implement martial law, all to a response against the protests that were a response to state-sanctioned violence. As Lenin said, fascism is capitalism in decay, and we are seeing this real in real time. As Euro-American hegemony is declining, something that the pandemic just showed us very clearly. So the US state is at it, acting out of desperation to prevent a real uprising of exploited and oppressed people because they are afraid. The state is scared. So let's now go into the moralization of police. I think the bourgeoisie is bad because I am a worker. They are inherently my enemy as I'm a working class person. Them being rich, is because of the exploitation of my class and our labor. And I don't like the police because they protect the system that exploits us. And I don't like them because they developed out of the 1800s um, as groups that went out to go catch private property. And that private property were runaway slaves, literal human beings. But I find it and maybe you disagree, but I find it futile to have these arguments about good or bad because I don't think that really matters. What matters is the truth that the class that controls the state exploits us. And the police, they use the police to maintain the status quo. And thus police are class traders and they're traders to our working class people. The economy rests on our backs. We are the majority. We are the economy. Thus, we are the only class of revolutionary potential, and we need to organize and push forward our class interests, which should be the seizure of the state and the means of production. This is how we get our liberation. This, once we seize the state and the means of production, this then becomes the dictatorship of the proletariat, which is the only true democracy. If the majority has the state and has control of power, that is democracy. We work, we create everything. Why then should we not have control of our state? That is socialism. But the goal of socialism is to abolish class society and end those divisions of power based on um, your relation to production, which ultimately then does away with the state. That is communism. The socialism, the socialist state, is the process to get there. The process of withering away of the state through ending these class divisions. This doesn't happen overnight. Racism and all the ills of colonialism and capitalism and class society don't just disappear because the worker now controls the state, but socialism's goal is to set forth the undoing of all these ills, whereas capitalism seeks to maintain it and spread it. And before I end, I just wanna say, organizers and people that have been participating in these protests have continuously said that this is not a race war but a response to the continuity of what centuries now of police brutality and so this is in essence whether they recognize it or not this is class war the state is beginning to implement and will continue to implement martial law because there has been an attack on private property they call angry workers looters. They call them violent. When it has been them that have been looted, and it was them that have been violent since the Europeans first arrived in the Americas with enslaved Africans on indigenous soil and looted and stole that land. 